Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me in not so sunny Spain. It's getting a bit fresh now. It's nearly five o'clock, I think, and the clouds just coming over. It's been t-shirt weather today, but uh, now it's like proper jacket on kind of stuff. Um, here at Craggle Margle West, friends there, just trying a 7A, 7A plus. I think that route is called Margle West. You can see super nice spot, even though the clouds coming over, absolutely stunning. This crag's a bit quieter than some of the stuff um, here in Margalef. I've been in Margalef for a couple of weeks. Before that, I was in Chile for a month. Um, it's been ace. It's proper sort of selfish climbing time. Not much work other than emails and things like that. Uh, and just climbing lots and lots and lots. I tend to have like two or three days on and then a day or two off. Um, because the rest is important. Oh, that wind's picking up now as well. I thought I'd do this video because I haven't done one for ages. Apologies. Uh, but to answer a question that I got on Instagram, which was from someone in the UK, where if you don't know, the weather isn't conducive to doing lots of rock climbing through this time of year. It's cold, it's damp, it's snow on the mountains at the moment which is great if you're into winter climbing, which I kind of used to be. I used to do a fair bit in Scotland and then go abroad to like the Alps and Norway and stuff like that as well. But if you're not into winter stuff, it can be pretty tricky. So this person was kind of asking um, how to stay contented and what have you uh, through the winter when you can't get out on real rock so much. It's not to say you can't at all, I used to live down in Swanage uh, in Dorset and occasionally you'll get a good day this time of year. Like I've climbed in t-shirts on the Ruckle. Um, when the when the sun is out and the, there's not much wind around it can be like really warm but most of the time it, it's not it's not like that especially if you live where i do in north wales uh so i thought of a few small points and then a few bullet point bigger points as well uh, to try and uh, you know answer that question as best i can the first little ones were doing things like you know just resting uh, if you've had a year of climbing um rest super important um, it's just let your body recover those little pulley injuries that you didn't want to rest and they weren't super bad but you know they would benefit from a bit of rest great time for that just generally chilling out and you know enjoying a bit of family time and things like that uh, some of us as climbers are a bit bad at that kind of thing because we're quite obsessive often uh, so yeah make, make the most of that sort of enforced time off in that sense Sorting out kit as well, things like, uh, you know, going through your trad rack. If you do stuff by the seaside, washing it, spraying it. I've done videos on looking after the kit. You can see Tor's making some headway on that wall up there now. Just a super nice climbing. Sorry, if it's a bit dark there, you might see it better. Just up on that bit there. Nice route, really cool route. Uh, yeah, washing that kit and stuff like that and replacing any nuts and things that you might have dropped or, you know, got stuck in cracks and things, just getting your rack in order, inspecting slings, making sure they're not too woolly and, you know, on their way out. Resoling rock shoes, if you're not getting out on rock, uh, most good resolers have a bit of sort of waiting time to get things resold. So send them off now while you can and send them off early. Don't let them get too trash. Don't let them get holes in. The kind of uh, the sole, it's kind of flattish at the front there's a line that i try and flash a picture up when it starts to become a little smile shape that's the time to get them resold and you'll get more resold out of them and they'll come back better and sort of more true to their original fit uh so th those are good little things that you can do but kind of the the big three points that i thought uh were more pertinent were kind of one embrace time at the wall you might you know might not particularly like indoor climbing compared to outdoor rock climbing but it is a great way of keeping up the fitness you can train properly or you can just go and get some mileage done it's good to keep your technique you know ticking over it's good to keep your arms you know getting a bit of work so you don't like you know feel terrible the first time you get out on real rock in the springtime it's just nice socially as well isn't it get to meet some climbing friends and make new friends all that kind of stuff and just get out and about and get some exercise it could be that you do a bit of running and things as well i think anything you can do to hit the ground running when spring comes has got to be a good thing uh, i love training so i often if i was having an enforced period of time i feel a lot stronger after that and you know then that transfers onto the rock really well so make the most of that kind of time my second point was kind of uh, going to lump them together as learning and planning so perhaps you're new to track climbing watch some videos of mine or other people and uh, you know learn some stuff make your own sort of sling mounting kind of thing and practice the belay building self-rescue stuff how many of us actually practice those kind of things when you go out with a mate you're there to go climbing aren't you so actually practicing some self-rescue so that you know you're pretty slick if and when you do need to do something hopefully you never will but if you do you want it to kind of come quite naturally so worth practicing those bits and pieces and 
also like uh, as a slight curveball learning head game stuff i'm reading through a book at the moment uh by rebecca williams i think i got that name right uh and uh forget the name of the book i'll flash it up maybe smart climbing or smarter climbing or something like that but i'll flash it up anyway it's about the psychology of climbing and improving your head game so that's super useful could be that you practice that stuff at the wall as well and i kind of use the time as well as learning sort of planning so you know coming up with a bit of a wish list of routes setting some goals some targets and they don't have to be necessarily grades it could be never climbed in the southwest so you're going to do a trad trip to cornwall those kind of things um that that can be super useful and I, i'd like to set goals of kind of three different standards ones that you'll almost certainly achieve they're good it's good to tick some stuff the second sort of group are ones that are going to be hard for you perhaps they're the next grade up so if you put some effort in you should get them and the third ones I want to be really hard that I may or may not achieve that year um, but it gives a bit of focus for training and stuff like that for me if you set them all really hard you'd just be demoralized because you never tick any and not just grades and things as well like I say or even areas but uh, one challenge for me last year was doing 57 A's and I managed to get that just took me to loads of new crags I've not been to climbing loads of routes I hadn't done before so I actually really enjoyed that almost more than some of the, the bigger grade stuff that I got done the third point I thought of was book a trip. Uh, I come to Spain for like three months and that's great, but don't hold me responsible for any marriage breakdowns and things like that if you start you know, thinking about that and mentioning that to your wife or, or husband. But if you can book like a week away, Spain, Greece, anywhere with some warm, dry rock, uh, it's something to look forward to. It's guaranteed climbing weather, almost guaranteed. And it breaks the winter up. You know, we're already at the middle of January. So by the time you go on a trip, it's not that long till springtime anyway. Uh, and you can get your little fix that way because I don't know with climbing it is almost like an addiction for me it is a bit like a drug and if I don't do it then I do start to feel a bit bad so uh, that's a good way of doing it it could be just booking trips into the future as well having something to look forward to but like I say trips are great but also just remember there is climbing to be done in the UK and that might be bouldering or something if it is cold bouldering you're only banging out a few moves at a time so it's easier to sort of stay warm in between goes and even if it's not your main thing so beneficial for you know your route climbing if you're a route climber so embrace all that stuff as well so there is a lot to be done i know it's hard uh it looks really snowy at home at the moment as well so it is super hard but there's lots to be done i just think being proactive kind of uh you know so you can be you know on top form and what have you come spring or whenever it is that you can start getting out regularly again i hope that was of some interest a bit of waffle um sadly i say sadly because it's getting cold now it's my turn to climb uh, i'm on a route just uh left of them it's 7c plus 8a oh, i've got pretty close i've done the crux a couple of times but just stringing the easier top bit together i'm running out of gas so i'm going to go and do that fire away with questions in the comments below or on insta facebook that kind of stuff you can like and subscribe and all those kind of things on there as well uh, and I'll answer the, the questions as best I can for sure. Gives me some content for more videos where I've got a list of things to do and I will get back on them a little bit more now that uh, I'm back in the zone again because I do enjoy doing them. As always though, the support is massively appreciated. Uh, I'm going to keep saying that in 23 as much as I have done in the other years as well. But as always, thanks very much for watching. More videos coming up very soon. Thank you.